Right now, I am sitting on a park bench in Charlotte, North Carolina at 12.04 in the afternoon. And if you were to tell me a year ago that I would be here, I would have asked you why. I'm not from here. I had never visited Charlotte ever before coming here. And technically, I don't even live here. My life has taken a total 180 over the last year. I mean, a year ago, I was reporting on the news. I was waking up at two o'clock in the morning to do it. It was very early. And now I'm traveling the country. First off was Nashville. Now I'm here in Charlotte and I'm doing a new city each month for an indefinite amount of time. But as you can imagine, this lifestyle is definitely not cheap. I should clarify that technically you can do this lifestyle on a budget. I mean, there are digital nomads who find super cheap Airbnbs and they find great deals on food and they're constantly cooking in. But for me, I personally wanted to spend a little extra on where I live because that's super important for me and not to mention my job. Obviously I'm constantly filming at home. So I allocated $20,000 for where I would be staying for four months. That is how many Airbnbs I had booked up until this point, and I stuck to that budget. I ended up spending, I think, just over $19,000. Obviously though, money doesn't grow on trees, although I wish it did, so I had to budget, I had to save, and I wanna show you exactly what I did to be able to afford this lifestyle. Something I wanna be super honest about though is I actually already had all of this money saved by the time I even decided I wanted to travel the country, and this is something I've been doing for years years, but I am a first-hand experience as someone who graduated college on a $40,000 salary. Saving money can be done on any salary. You truly can save. It's really just like all about a mindset. You're going to see a big pattern with a lot of these tips I have, but pennies turn to dollars. Like I truly believe that. And I can tell you firsthand, even though I do make more money now than I did then, I was saving a lot of money and I wasn't making that much, but it's just these principles that truly made the biggest difference where I have friends who are making more than double my salary, yet they were having trouble affording their apartment rent all by themselves. They had help from parents and they were having trouble making ends meet because I happened to be putting a lot more away. I happened to be, I don't know, just having these strategies. And I'll be honest, it's not that hard for me. I just do have a, like, I don't know, like a, a sense, like a, a desire to save. I can't even explain it, but even if you don't have that sense naturally, even though right now maybe you're thousands of dollars in debt, it's not too late to adopt these habits at all. So my goal with this video is to help you save, even if maybe you don't want to travel, maybe it's for a car or a house, whatever it might be, I truly do think these tips can help. And I just noticed my backpack was in that shot the entire time. I, I suck. We're starting out basic, but this is a basic tip for a reason. It works and it is cooking at home. And when I say cooking, you can see like I use that term <laughs> very loosely. I am not the best cook, but really whenever you prepare your meal at home, it is going to cost so much less. And one rule that I live by is if I am not eating with another human, I am cooking. So I don't want saving money to get in the way of me living my life. Like I don't want to be like, no, sorry, can't go out. I'm saving money, like that's just dumb. So if I'm eating out, that's fine, I'll enjoy that. But I just don't wanna get in the habit of grabbing lunch every day or even ordering in. That's a really bad habit to get into. Doesn't have to be super complicated. As you can see, this is just like a frozen bag of veggies and quinoa. We've also got the chicken. And really my rule of thumb is I just try to eat out during the week and then the weekend is when I let myself get a little bit crazy. But in my opinion by then, I've earned it. By the way, if you haven't already tried this out, you have to. The brand is Greenwise. It's quinoa and squash, kale, carrots, and sweet potato, and it is so freaking good. If you go into my pantry, you'll also notice I have multiples of a lot of things, and that is because when you buy in bulk, you save money, at least a lot of the time. I am constantly on the hunt for buy two, get one free deals, or two for five dollars, things like that saves a lot of money. And of course, it's not just about what you eat, but what you drink, and more specifically, how you caffeinate. So personally, I drink both coffee and tea, although I am more of a tea gal. And I know this is like the oldest cliche you hear every billionaire or whatever finance person say, like, don't go to Starbucks, don't do it. But when we do the math on this, you are going to see why you should just never go, at least don't make it a habit. Don't make it like a daily routine. So let's just say a Starbucks coffee is five bucks. I know they vary widely, but there are some as low as $3, some as high as, I don't even know. I've seen some that are like six, $7, which is very scary. So let's just say it's $5 and you get one every single weekday. So that's 25 bucks a week, AKA $100 a month, AKA 
$1,200 a year. And now let's take my good old Bigelow tea. This is just what I get at the grocery store. For this entire box, it costs $3.20 and it comes with 20 bags. So each cup of tea is just 16 cents. And if you have one a day, every weekday, that's 80 cents a week, AKA $3.20 a month, AKA $38.40 a year. And so if you drink your caffeine at home, you are saving more than $1,000. Easy. And I do want to pop in here to add that I know some people love their Starbucks. They need their Starbucks. They wouldn't be able to go on without it. And if that's you, that's fine. I mean, if it truly is that important to you, saving money is pretty much just all about prioritizing and realizing what you can go without. And look, if you love your Starbucks, but you're in desperate need to save money, you do the math. This next step sounds kind of gimmicky, so much so that I almost didn't even include it, but credit card points. I used to think this was some sort of mythical, fake thing that people just talked about, but no, it's real. Like you will make money. I personally didn't get a credit card until a few years ago because I'm stupid and I, I don't know. It's really annoying because building credit takes so much time, but now I'm in the game and I'm here to tell you that if you open up a credit card, make sure you look at the point system. So I personally use Chase and you could see that so far this year, I've made $143 in cash back rewards. And I can tell you, I haven't even been using it to the fullest extent, but I cashed in a couple hundred dollars last year based on this, which that's no small thing. I mean, a couple hundred dollars that I did nothing to earn. And you can see that it normally gives you 1% in cash back for normal things, but each quarter they have specific categories that will earn you 5% cash back. So this month it is movie theaters, rental car agencies, and gas stations. So by filling my car up with gas this month, I'm actually making money. And obviously the same thing goes for airline miles as well. It's actually pretty easy to get a free flight. This next one won't apply to everyone, but I have to mention it for those who this does apply to. I bought my car in cash, and actually I bought both of my cars in cash. When I was a sophomore in college, I bought Gary, which was my Honda Accord. I bought him for $12,000 and it wiped out my bank account. Like I truly had only a couple hundred dollars, but I knew I was working, I was working at a deli and I knew I would make back that money. I didn't wanna have to pay interest because I didn't wanna buy a $12,000 car that actually ended up being $15,000 or however much it was. And I understand this is a privilege to be able to buy a car in cash, but I can't not mention it because it certainly did help me. And I see so many people who make car payments who don't have to, they have the money in their bank account and they just are like, oh, let's just do the payments. But listen, even if you're only paying, I don't know, a hundred dollars extra a month in interest or whatever it is, it adds up and I truly do think buying my car in cash was a great decision. I don't regret it. It saved me a lot of money in the long run. Another great way to save money is to get a roommate and fall in love because that has saved me a lot of money splitting some bills. Splitting the bills? Yeah. More like me paying for all your bills. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> I'm paying for your roommate. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. That's how I see it. You want me to give any other tips? No, nope, you're dismissed. But really, I have always saved money on where I live because I'm just renting and it was always temporary to me. Like I had a bigger picture. So when I first moved to Dayton, I remember there was this place I wanted to live so badly. It's called Austin Landing and it just looked so luxurious and beautiful. But I think it was like $1,000 a month or something like that. And my place, Mad River Apartments, ended up being $700 a month. So I saved a lot of money that way. And then obviously, yes, I did move in with Zach. So I I know you can't really help that, but having a roommate to split the bills is huge. That saved me a lot of money. Not to mention when we were apartment hunting, there was this one spot in downtown Cincinnati, Lytle Apartments, which we fell in love with. We loved it, but it was about $400 more a month than the place we ended up picking. And I don't know, it's just the idea of paying $400 more a month. I was just like, let's save this money because we're only gonna be here for a couple of years. We're gonna wanna buy a house one day. Why not save that money? And little did we know we'd actually be traveling, but eventually we are buying a house as well. But needless to say, if you are currently renting, try to keep the big picture in mind. Like don't get so caught up in the luxurious apartment complexes, that downtown view, like, Think about it, this is temporary. Would I rather spend a lot of money now for just this year or two? Or would I rather a beautiful, bigger house in the future? Or would I rather travel? And if you do wanna travel, specifically if you wanna travel long-term, I would consider staying at each place for at least a month 
And that's because we're going to save so much money and you'll be able to stay in places you otherwise would never dream of being able to stay. Allow me to explain. A lot of Airbnbs offer huge monthly discounts where maybe the nightly price is so high and you could never afford a weekend there, but if you stay the full month, you actually could. And the reason a lot of these owners offer these monthly discounts is because they're saving money in the long term. When they have fewer people staying at their place, that means they hire fewer cleaners because obviously they're cleaning the place in between each and every stay and making sure the place is great and making sure it's organized, possibly even meeting the person who's staying at their place to let them in. And when they have just one person for the full month, that's a heck of a lot easier for them and that's why they're willing to offer these discounts. So if we take my Nashville Airbnb, for example, I stayed there for 34 nights and the normal price for that is $10,252. But they were offering a 67% monthly price discount, meaning I saved almost $7,000 and my grand total for 34 nights was $4,186, which is a heck of a lot more affordable than the grand total of 10,000. As for this rental that I'm currently in, the one in Charlotte, stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a what I spend in a week in Charlotte video where I reveal all. And that is a great time to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because we've got a lot of great things going on. I think, I hope, I try. <laughs> and by the way, I've been getting a lot of comments asking why I'm the one who paid for the Airbnbs, like why didn't Zach split it with me? But what you don't see behind the scenes is that right before we left for travels, like the last few months, Zach paid for our full Cincinnati rent to make it even. And I'm just the one who happened to hit buy on the Airbnb is like, it's as simple as that. And obviously one day we plan on getting married and combining our finances. So it doesn't really matter. Now, when it comes to beauty maintenance, this is a huge way to save so much money because I see so many people blowing all their money on hair and nails. These are two huge expenses for a lot of people. I've never dyed my hair in my life. So when I see that some people spend like $200 on a haircut, my haircut, guys, $35. Well, at least that's what it was in Cincinnati. I don't know how much it's gonna be here in Charlotte, but I seriously just find the cheapest salon, but in good reason. Obviously, I'm not gonna like super cuts, but the cheapest salon, and then you can actually select, do you want like the master stylist? That might cost a little extra, or do you want the beginner? And I always just choose someone straight out of beauty school because I don't know, I have confidence. My hair is not really that hard to cut, so that's why I save a lot of money, and I only get it cut like once or twice a year. I'm just not... I don't know, I just don't get it cut that often. And then as for my nails, I recently got very into these glue-on nails. It saves me so much money, but before that, I simply just rock the bare nails. I only get my nails done like four times a year. It's a really special treat for me. It adds up, I mean, that's an expensive thing. You have to pay for the service, and then you have to tip, and before you know it, you're spending like $100 at the nail salon. So it helps if you can cut back on that. And when I see people who are going to the salon like every two weeks, if you could afford it, that's great, but um, that's crazy. And I do wanna mention I'm human, and lately I have been getting a little more bougie with my skincare. I do pay for facials every month. I recently got these Tatcha products that are so expensive. Like, this is a cleanser, this is a cream slash moisturizer. Altogether, it was over 100 bucks, which sounds nuts, but I choose to prioritize different things in my life. Obviously, I'm making a little more money, so I feel like I can do that little extra splurge, and to me, like, nothing is more important than skin, so that's where I choose to put my money. With that being said, one thing I have managed to avoid is lifestyle creep, meaning you make more money, so you spend more money. But if you keep that cycle going, you'll never actually have more money, which I never want that to happen. So even as I have kind of worked my way up the ladder and I've made more money and more money and more money each year, my spending truly didn't change. Like even now, yes, I'm traveling and this is a huge expense, but day to day, I'm not buying more clothing. I'm not eating out more. Like I'm not changing it because of my salary. Zach's on a business call. So we're moving into my closet, welcome. But I never changed how much I spent. I feel like you can either wear your money or drive your money, get a new car or do all of these things, but I'd rather keep my money in my bank account. One thing I have to mention though, is naturally I just don't have expensive taste. Like for example, I'm outside Ralph Lauren. I went inside, there was a belt bag which, okay, seemed like a nice belt bag, $98. Like to me, that just doesn't mesh well. I just don't buy expensive things. It's just my natural taste. The ironic thing is I am carrying a Kate Spade bag, which is very nice, but this was a gift from a friend and this is the only bag. <laughs> 
honestly, the most expensive thing about me is that yes, I do indeed break a lot of things. I'm very clumsy and I end up having to pay for it. This is the only bag I own. I own a little wristlet as well, but this is the only purse because I'm just not into that. And the reason I'm saying this is because I can't help that. You can't help it if you naturally are into like designer purses, things like that. It's just not an interest of mine and naturally it helps me out. Another huge tip is to find activities that are free. And I know so many of you guys are right now like click out of the video, that is so stupid, that can't be done, I need to spend hundreds of dollars to have fun, that rhymed. But I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Like my favorite activity in the world is coming to a park with my big yellow backpack and breaking out my journal and just spending a full hour writing in my journal or reading on my Kindle, which this thing has saved me so much money. Another huge tip, don't buy books. You will spend so much money. I mean, books are pretty expensive. And why buy them when you can borrow them from the library? And what makes it even more convenient is you can borrow them on your Kindle. When I discovered this, it changed my life because going to the library and putting a book on hold and then having to go there, it's just, it's a whole process. But if you download the app Libby on your iPhone and then connect it to your city's library, you will have access to all of their books in their digital library. So everything. And then you can put multiple books on hold so you always have a new one coming and it costs zero dollars. I will say I do allow myself to buy I don't know, maybe like one or two books a year. If it's a really big one, it just came out and I don't have time to wait like 14 weeks for it, I'll buy it. But I let it be a once a year type thing, maybe twice if a really good book's coming out. Just as long as I'm not buying a new book every week. And obviously I could give you all the tips in the world, but if you're not motivated to actually put these into practice, you're not gonna see a difference. And one huge way I do that is by always having an end goal in mind. Like, okay, I'm not gonna buy something here, I'm not gonna buy that brand new pair of jeans that cost $200 because I'm actually gonna buy something else. Like, it's not that I'm depriving myself, I'm just choosing to get my happiness a little bit later, like I'm getting the reward later. And to me, that's so much more exciting. Like, it excites me so much to think. I've always had it in the back of my head, like one day I wanna buy a really nice house. Boom, like settled. Like that is truly what motivates me each and every day to not blow all my money. And then another huge thing, and this was especially pertinent when I was working and not making that much money, is to take something you wanna buy. Like for example, a pair of jeans that maybe cost $100, whatever it might be. And don't think about it as $100. Think about it as the amount of hours you would need to work to afford that pair of jeans. So for example, if you are making $10 an hour, which is what I made when I worked at the deli, you would need to work more than a full day. I mean, I only worked eight hour days at the deli. So a full day, that's 80 bucks. I still can't even afford that pair of jeans. And suddenly when you look at it that way, you're like, okay, wait, maybe I don't need that pair of jeans. It also wouldn't be right if I didn't mention the quickest and easiest and best way to put more money in your bank account is to make more money. And I know that's kind of like a, not taboo, but it's just not what you want to hear. You want to hear, oh, how can I be a millionaire couponing? Like that, that sounds great because honestly, couponing doesn't, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to offend the couponers, but it in theory doesn't take as much time, right? But when you make more money, I mean, boom, you're putting that money right in your bank account. And there are so many ways to make money that didn't even exist years ago. I mean, Ubering and doing, what is it, like DoorDash, like things like that, walking dogs, like it adds up. And maybe it's not the most glamorous thing in the world to say, oh, I Uber on the side. Who cares? For me, when I was doing YouTube part-time, like even in college, it wasn't necessarily like the most glamorous thing. Glamorous isn't the word, but it wasn't like impressive. You know, I only had like a few thousand subscribers. I'm pretty much just talking to myself. I was making a couple hundred extra bucks a month, right? Like I wasn't making a full-time living like I am now, but I was still making some extra money and it worked for me. And so if you can, the best thing is to find a hobby that also pays, something you enjoy doing where you make money. And I know that not everyone can do that. It's not so easy, but it truly is what has worked for me and what has kept me so happy while in this ultra saving mode. And I do wanna mention, I'm not necessarily in ultra saving mode. I think I am pretty frugal still, but you should have seen me a few years ago. Like, <laughs> it was nuts, but it paid off. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't come off as like condescending or anything like that. These are just tips for if you truly are trying to save money. If you don't wanna listen to any of these tips, that's okay, like pick and choose because maybe, for example, you love that Starbucks drink and that's okay if that truly is a priority for you. But if you can go without the Starbucks drink, 
it obviously helps. And oh my gosh, guys, I have like the weather channel on right now because Hurricane Ian is currently hitting. This is insane. Those are cars. Really hope everyone stays safe. But anyway, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. I mostly do vlogs, but I love putting in just like my little money saving hacks, money saving tips. Like I'm very illiterate when it comes to finances. Like I'm not good at investing. Like I'm just not knowledgeable, but I think I'm pretty good at finding ways and hacks to save money, that type of thing. Like I'm very into money. I love saving. I love I don't know, it's almost like a game like or like a sport. I can't even explain it. But anyway, hopefully I can talk more about finances in the future. Leave a comment below if you have any recommendations. I do wanna do that what I spend in a week in Charlotte video and for future cities I'm in because I think that'd be fun. But thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I'll talk to you later, bye.